Welcome back to the Stoop Football fans. We're up bright and early in New York, and James is up even earlier. He had to be up at 6 a.m. to watch his Mighty Whites not quite destroy Burnley. I would say survive and win. But uh, we'll, we'll get all into that right now. But before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell. Uh, let's go. James, I mean, getting up at 6 a.m. <laughs> if you lose at 6 a.m., you've got to be furious, right? So, oh, yeah. so yeah. it makes yeah. it all feel better when you have to get up so early and you nick a win like that, right? I know, yeah. yeah that was good. It was good. Um, yeah, you know, first half, we created a lot of chances. Uh, it was... Yeah, different, different from the, you know, the first half, very different from the second half. Uh, the yeah. first half, we created yeah. chances for yeah, Fenia was fantastic. I mean, he was slicing up the Burnley defense. Uh, I thought Jack Harrison played well, had a really nice cross that Rodrigo should have buried in the back of the net. Definitely. Um, yeah, but then after that, I mean, the second half, uh, you know, Burnley made some adjustments. They became a lot more aggressive. Yeah. They pushed us back. They started pressing a little bit higher. Uh, and uh, then, you know, follow the set pieces. You know, all the set pieces followed off of that. It seemed like a complete, like, avalanche of set pieces. I mean, like, oh a, my just God. one and, continuous set piece. In and, the and that's, that's and Burnley's then, course, world. In, in added time, it was all Burnley set pieces. They had, like, four set pieces in added time or something. It was insane. And that's, that's what you don't want against Burnley. We don't want that against anybody, let alone Burnley. Yeah, that's where Melia was having a Miss Leslie was having a was having a bad day already at the office. Somehow, keeping a clean sheet, um, and you just saw the corners just stacking up and stacking up. And that's almost the only way Burnley scores. Uh, they yeah. have massive towering people. Uh, Woods is fantastic. Barnes is fantastic in the air. Then you have uh, Tchaikovsky. That's not his name, but every time they say it, I go, Oh, Tchaikovsky. Parkington. Parkington. But. You guys survived it, and it, and it was uh, like I texted you. It was a uh, squeaky bum time, or um, yes, uh, bum clinching. <laughs> it was bum for clinching. Forty-five yes. minutes. Yes, squeaky bum, itchy bum. Squeaky yeah, it was, it was bad. But uh, I, I gotta say, big up to Sam Dice for for making that switch at halftime and deciding no, we're not going to be overrun. And yeah. Burnley played a whole hell of a lot of offense, a whole lot more than we've seen in a while um so yeah we figured we figured they'd make adjustments right and uh because nothing was happening for them in the first half they're not yeah. I, you know they're a good team for us to play because they don't have a lot of pace on the counter attack and they don't have a lot of offensive options i mean basically chris wood you know it was their leading goal scorer i think he had three goals coming into that match yeah uh most of those probably on set pieces i mean i wouldn't know for sure but i would guess that most of them were on set pieces so yeah, I mean they're a good team for us. But then he made those adjustments in the second half, and they kind of started showing, uh, you know, signs of life at least offensively, yeah. and sort of dictating the pace of play to us. And I thought, you know, we had a couple of good counterattacking um, chances there. Uh, you know, Pablo Hernandez had one, and I think Paveda had another one um, that you know when he when he, when he kicked it back that uh, you know just wasn't no to one nobody. Was there. Nobody. Uh, but Pablo Hernandez probably should have kicked, passed it off to Harrison, but you know he to any one of five part, different but, players. There was a lot there, of people were, in the box. You you saw him the closer and closer he got. He was like, who who wants it? Who wants it? Yeah. I oh, want I'm gonna, it. I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. You wanna keep me on the bench, Bielsa? I'll show you. <laughs> Um, but yeah. it probably should have passed it off there. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's get to the elephant in the room, or the two elephants in the room, which both happened in the first 10, 15 minutes of the match. The two goalkeeper, I don't know, errors. Transgressions. Or transgressions. If you will, right. transgressions. That's what you're here for. Um, <laughs> so the first one on Nick Pope, I guess in super slow motion, you see that Bamford actually gets the touch. He, he yeah. gets an ever so slight of a touch. So, yeah. so that all I, all I can say is on the referee, damn, good call. Um, I, everyone I, was against it. I, I was thought, even against it. I thought Pope it. had it. I thought Pope got there first. But then, I really did. But it went to VAR, and VAR checked it out, and uh, they saw there was the touch. And that's why um, VAR is ruining the sport. But had he gotten more of a touch... <laughs> Pope would have been out. Bar is fantastic, Mark. 
Stop, stop criticizing Barr, man. I'm not going to hear it. Is he your man of the match? <laughs> <laughs> but that, the ball by Luke Ayling to cause all that, the, it, it, all that's beautiful. That was all beautiful. And it was mm-hmm. hard on Nick Pope, but, but you, you saw right away, uh, if, if Bamford would have got slightly more of a touch, Pope would have been sent off. That would have been a red card. Oh, definitely, um, definitely. So I think that was the balance there of, of it's not really a huge foul on Pope. He just didn't get there in time. I don't know. It's it's tough. But yeah, in the and, end, super slow. And, and, and the sending off of keepers sometimes is a tricky thing, too, because if it happens too early in the match, sometimes they won't give that red card to the keeper if it happens later in the match they will yeah. it just it just really depends on the referee and what's you know what's in his head at that at that particular moment yeah. but uh yeah so you never really know about that that's always you know if because i've seen it happen before like a stone cold penalty you know with a with a with a goalkeeper and, and you know goalkeeper isn't sent off isn't given a red yeah uh, but it's too early in the match like in the first five ten yeah. minutes and they won't yeah. do it yeah, if if, if 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 Pope gets uh, sent off, I'm I'm just completely blistered, um, and yeah. and I think it just comes down to consistency in calls. And I'm just reminded of the Pickford incident with with uh, with Van Dyke, and I would just be I would just be pissed. Now yeah, that now that's a diff- that's a blown I, I, play. That sure, plays dead. Sure, but still, I bl- I'm just right. I, I would I would be very upset if Pope gets sent off. For that, yeah. which was a yeah. less of a yeah. transgression yeah. than what Pickford did. Well, what we've seen is if, if there's an offside call, you're allowed to drop kick. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. That's that's right. I forgot that that, 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 was, uh, that, that that was an that's issue. The new decision that they've come to this year is offside so call, you're allowed to shib you. Whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, take your boot off. Uh, now let's go to what I think is the more controversial. I don't think it, it is. It is the more controversial one. Um, right. And I think it comes down to Melier, Miss Leslie, not playing very well and making poor decisions from the get-go. Yeah. Um, and he came out late for that ball. He should have been there standing his ground. He didn't make up his mind, which caused yeah. him to completely clatter uh, Barnes, was it? I think it was or Barnes. Wood. I don't it was know. on me, I think, right? Me. Yeah, it was me. It was God. me. Uh, and it happened later on in the match. If you'll notice, there was a moment later on in the match, almost the exact same thing happened. Uh, Melier stayed in, in the net, mm-hmm. should have come out. And I think it was Ailing that turned around and said, well, you know, what are you doing? Yeah. You need, you need to yeah. come out. You need to come out and be more aggressive yeah. and, and get these balls because that's what caused you problems earlier yeah. in the match. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, Ailing, I mean, like I said, he's going to need Melee is going to need that type of direction because he's a kid. Yeah. You know, he's still young. And I and think he learned, was. He, it's going to take him a while. He was not confident in his hands. It seemed like every yeah. parry he went to make was like broken wrist. He was slapping at the ball uh, rather than punching. Oh, yeah. he, Even the catches were bobbled. Yeah. I think his confidence was shot on that. So he was like, what do I do? Yeah. So lucky that yeah. it wasn't a penalty. I don't think it's a penalty because he did, he's up there, and they're always gonna call that on the defender. Uh, They're always gonna call that foul. The problem is the whistle straight away. Now for Leeds fans, it's fantastic. (laughs) Blow the whistle, blow the whistle, Um, because they kind of let it all slack and and let a goal in. Um, But the whistle was blown, so that means the goal, the whistle was blown before the ball went in, so the goal is not reviewable, which is crazy. Right, exactly. Uh, all they can look at is, is it a penalty? No, it's not. Is it a red card? No, it's not. Then we're going with whatever right. the fuck the ref said. Yeah, that's right. um, it's kind so of unfortunate for Burnley. It's unfortunate, but hey, you, you got that little bit of luck. Like Arsenal got that little bit of luck yesterday. Oh, the, the, the rub of the green we were calling The it. rub of the green. We lear- yes. learned a new phrase from Lawler. Uh, y'all had the rub of the green. And then, you know what? Me- Melier made six or... I started him in fantasy, so... <laughs> <laughs> he had like six saves. So the kid did great. He did very well. He just made yeah. a lot of mistakes. And to come out of that with a clean sheet? Oh, my God. He... 
Yeah, he still has a little bit. He shows a little bit of, like you mentioned, the slapping and the attempted, you know, punching yeah. of the ball and all of this. He still has a little bit too much of the continental goalkeeping style in him, you know, and not so much the the British style, which is more of an aggressive, you know, catching of the ball in the air and that sort of thing. I mean, he's he's not. He, I mean, the, the punching and everything is is kind of new in the Premiership because yeah. of all the all the uh, continental goalkeepers who come over, but. In the past, you know, that was something that was frowned upon. I mean, it was yeah. sort of like, look, you know, you need to catch the ball, you need to catch use your it. hands, yeah. and you need to be aggressive, uh, you know, out of the net. Yeah. And you just don't, uh, it's not a continental style, you know, so yeah. it's just a little bit, he needs to learn a little bit more to be to be more aggressive and to use and to catch the ball more, you know. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Well, look, uh, I think both Patrick Bamford and and Melier are going to benefit from this season immensely. Where yeah, you know, if if Melier was playing for Chelsea, he would be benched already, and they would have bought a new keeper, like mm-hmm. Kepa. You know, same thing with Bamford. Bamford on another team would not be playing right now because he misses a lot of chances. Right. Um, but they're sticking with this squad because once again, Bielsa knows the squad they have and the and the way you guys play. This squad can stay up. And the experience that these young guys are going to get, that it's going to turn them into premiership players. They they are championship Mm -hmm. players. But getting 90 minutes, 95 minutes, getting the the playing time, being allowed to make the mistakes. Bielsa's press conference this this week, I don't know if you got to see it after the the Man United, the like 50-minute long one. (laughs) <laughs> um, God, how much did their translator get paid? Well, I was going to mention, luckily, I, I, my Spanish is fairly good, so the the translator can't keep up with no. him. He does a good job, but but he can't keep up with all the things he said. Bielsa had some things to say about the media, which I thought were fantastic, uh, but he mentioned about, like, Liam Cooper. Yes, Liam Cooper has the most... challenges lost he's lost the most challenges yeah but it's because he goes against the number one header of the ball every time mcguire got no chances when cooper was Mm -hmm. was on the pitch cooper came off mcguire had two immediate chances Uh, but he said it's not about i don't care about you missing your chances or missing or failing what i care about is you learning those Realize exactly. that you're going up against the best in the world, and the way we become the best in the world is by learning from those challenges. So, yeah, I'm going to keep putting him out there. Yeah, I'm going to. And that just shows you why Bamford is still there, why Melier is still there, because he sees that in them and he sees them growing. I'm talking a lot, man. I'm sorry. I'm very excited. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, no, I, I agree with everything you're saying. And- and, I mean, he's kind of – he has a lot of practice defending Bamford. I mean, uh, you know, he's been doing it for two years now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because Bamford's gotten a lot of criticism over the, yeah, yeah. you know, the couple of years that he's been there. And But he always maintains his confidence in Bamford. And he's going to play him. I mean, he loves him. You know, and, and Bamford, you know, like I said, works his ass off. He, he's really good at hold-up play. And he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a Bielsa kind of guy. Yeah. And I think that he's cerebral as well. And I think that that kind of works with uh, with NBL's system. But, yeah, I mean, I know I agree with you. I think this this season, you know, we stay up. And I think every player is going to benefit. Yeah. And then, we, you know, we make some decisions this summer about kind of, you know, who is just, you know, too limited yeah. uh, and maybe won't and won't evolve into that premiership style player or kind of player that we're looking for. And then, and then, you know, then we make some hard decisions in the summer transfer window. Yeah. But we're not going to, I mean, we're not going to do much now, I don't think. And, and like I've been saying, I mean, uh, you know, Kinnear has come out and said that, uh, you know, we're not going to do much in January. I think we're, we're, we're you know, standing pat. And yeah. That's going to be, you know, so the yeah. team we have now is kind of the team we're going with. So yeah. they, 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 they need to, yeah, they, they need to progress. They need to learn and uh, yeah. evolve, you know, in the premiership style players. And look, how, how many points do you guys have? 20. You guys have 20, 20 points. 20 points, not even halfway through the season. Yeah. If I told you that as soon as you got promoted, that half, not even halfway, uh, by the day after Boxing Day, you'd have 20 points. You'd be ecstatic, right? Right. I mean, that's nothing 
That's more than Arsenal have. I mean, not that that's yeah. something to compare with right, once again. Right, right, right. We're not, well, we're not comparing yeah. for Arsenal. I had a discussion with um, a couple of my mates this morning, you know, uh, talking about the match. And I think, I mean, I think 30 points will keep us up. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's, you know, that's a very fine margin, yeah. 30 points. Yeah. But I still think 30 points keeps us up. Yeah. 35, I think we're absolutely Which, safe. That's three and wins in a draw. 40 has been the traditional safety point. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think we need that this year. No, no, the bottom of the table is terrible. No. They're, they're awful. Yeah. yeah. And they're not getting any better. Yeah. Well, I mean, once again, I the more and more that I watch uh, Leeds United play, the the more the more I love Bielsa, um, the more I love the ownership and leadership that they are 100% behind him, and the players are 100% behind Bielsa as well, and oh, Bielsa is 100% behind himself. <laughs> like that's what he said yeah. in the press conference was, I'm always gonna do like. You tell me to change my tactic, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> like yeah, exactly. You're not watching the same match I am from the same perspective, so be quiet. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> and he even said, what happened to English football? Where you would yeah. go for, for the, the result, even if it cost you more goals, you wouldn't yeah. stop fighting. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know what's happened. That I'm getting called out for pushing when we're six goals down or five yeah. goals down and he's like because six two is better than six one six three yeah. is better than six two like we get <laughs> it's, yeah it's just mad you should go back and 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 listen to it. it's fantastic you know one of the things you know we we, we, we talk a lot about how how fun leads is is to watch and, and how welcome they are to the league um just based on their schedule as of lately Burnley playing Arsenal, Burnley playing Wolves, Burnley playing Leeds. I've watched those games. There's a lot to like about Burnley. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I've grown a little, you know, to have a little bit of fondness for what they yeah. do. You know, I think they're a pretty good squad. I don't think that they're as bad as their record on the table might suggest. No, um, no. But they've been they've been really really impressive, really fun to watch. And and they'll feel really hard done that that this wasn't a draw at the very least. Uh, if not a win, yeah. because the pressure that they put on Leeds, I haven't seen, I haven't seen that from any other team so far. Even against Man United, it was back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Right. This was the second half. You had a few chances, maybe. Yeah. Uh, you I couldn't mean, get the was, ball um, out of your half. It, it was, it was very yeah. impressive, very impressive, and I think Burnley's yeah. going to be just fine. You're going to have to win matches like that. I mean, they're going to be they're going to be some matches that the second half are going to be really tight and uh, hardly and, and, and fought, you know, closely fought yeah. matches. Yeah. And uh, you know, you had to. I mean, I don't think we had a bunker mentality, but I no, think no, it no. was sort of okay. Well, you know, let's take what they give us, and and we did. I mean, like yeah. I said, we had those counterattacking chances. We should have probably scored on at least one yeah. of them. Yep. And then it's two to nothing going into, you know, added time. And yeah. then you feel, you know, okay, it's pretty safe. And then you press for the third, we just of can't, course. You can't surrender that many set pieces. So, no, you know, we no, just no. can't do that. We, we're giving the ball away far too easily. And, um, you know, that's an issue that's going to have to be. Our passing today was not great. And especially in the second half, it was yeah. it was abominable. You but know, hell, it was, it was not, not, a good, not a good passing performance. But flip the coin over. You shouldn't have given away so many set pieces. Flip the coin over. You defended 20 set pieces or something yeah. with no goals. So yeah. as ugly as it may have looked against one of the best corner corner taken teams, like the yeah. team that, that thrive on that. So, I mean, yeah, th things are, things are, that type of win is very, very impressive. Uh, oh, yeah, I agree. more impressive than a 6-0 or something uh, yeah. because it was so hard fought. Mm -hmm. And those are the games you guys need to win. Yeah, it showed a lot of character. Oh, those yeah. are the yeah. games well, we knew, you guys yeah, need to we knew, win. We knew, we knew, we knew the, uh, the Burnley match was going to be that sort of match. Yeah. And uh, and I thought that we you know we, we played it really well. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, I mean, the, yeah, the flip side of that is we defended the corners and the set pieces. Uh, you know, I, I think Stroik had a lot to do with that. I mean, Stroik's really tall. 
Yeah. You know, uh, I thought Calvin Phillips, like I said, was just sensational back yeah. there. He's my man. Uh, you the know, match. clearing the ball, getting his head yeah. on the ball, deflecting passes. Um, you know, he was he seemed to always be in the right spot. Yeah. Uh, you know, Luke Ayling, I thought did really well. Yeah. yeah. So you know, and then you know, Stuart Dallas, is, you know, did well as yeah. you know as well. I mean, I expect that from him, so yeah. he was good back there. Well, yeah. let's go, Mark. Mark kicked us off, so let's go with man of the match. You. Said- I, I I think a lot of the uh, the pressure that. Uh, that Burnley was putting out there uh, was was kind of head off by Calvin Phillips. I think he was all over, uh, definitely preventing Burnley from getting into positions to to maybe see about scoring. He's my man of the match. All right, um, I'm I'm going to go with Luke Ayling for me. Uh, first of all, the the cross he had, basically that dude. He's playing center back. He, he's, I don't know how he's so active in, in the attack, but uh, every time he stole the ball, intercepted the ball, got a tackle, it wasn't just, okay, who, who's, who's next? Here, take the ball. He got yeah. it, made space, and you just see him. Boom, ball goes, and it hits somebody. His passes were on. They're pretty crisp. Even if nothing came of it, it wasn't a, oh, I got the ball, here. It's, oh, I got the ball, and he makes the little bit of space and picks a pass. I mean, the first one to Bamford that, that turned into the penalty was like a Brett Favre old school Green Bay. I Are they going to know who that is? Was, yeah. That's Brett Favre, maybe? Aaron Rodgers, maybe? Why is it all Green Bay? Ugh. Drew Brees, well, Drew Brees maybe? can't throw that far. He used to. <laughs> all right, so James, who, who's your man of the match? Uh, I think both both of y'all make uh, excellent points. Uh, I'm gonna go with Mark though. I'm gonna say uh, Calvin Phillips, and I'll and I'll tell you why. For me, is because of the of the amount of pressure that's on him right yeah. now. With the, with the, the center back pairings being so unpredictable, and every week it's someone new. Every match is someone new uh, back there, new pairing. Yeah. Uh, he is really kind of the steadying force back there, and he showed it today. Uh, that, I mean, I thought he was magnificent. So I mean, I, I'm I'm going with uh, with Calvin Phillips and, uh, and just the fact that he's playing so far back. Uh, you know, he's just not not playing. He's just sort of and you know playing almost out of position. And let's not forget, he's on he's on yellow cards. So yeah, he had to survive that onslaught clean. Exactly. Clean, mm-hmm. clean, clean. Because we know how much he matters to this team. Yeah. So like he's hoping to get. I don't know when the date is where they reset. Uh, I thought it was around this time, but um, he he had to keep a clean, clean, clean. I got no word coming out right now. My hands. He are had frozen. to keep it clean. He had to keep it clean. And he, he had did. to keep it clean. And it was a saw, very disciplined performance. Exactly. Very and, disciplined. and I think that's why Cleese um, came up. Uh, and you know, I, I, very tactical, very disciplined. I mean, he looked, he looked, he looked. Like I said, he looked magnificent back there. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Very great performance. Well, good, good. Um, okay, so who's next? Who do you got next? West Brom. Oh. West Brom, another team. On that... Tuesday, I think it's a short, it's a short turnaround. Yeah, yeah, that's Tuesday. You guys play Tuesday. Um, yeah. So do Arsenal. So it's going to be a busy afternoon for us on Tuesday. <laughs> Hopefully, both teams can keep it going and start climbing the table together. Uh, I don't mind if you guys are ahead of Arsenal as long as we, we're climbing together, <laughs> knocking some of these teams down. Um, <laughs> right. But hell, hey, hell of a hell of a Boxing Day weekend, St. Stephen's Day, Christmas. Yes. Uh, Arsenal beat Chelsea, so it's not just we won. We beat Chelsea for everybody who hates Chelsea. And I know. I, lo- I love seeing Fat Frank crying. And he and he cried a lot. I love I love how he threw his players under the bus. <laughs> immediately, <laughs> immediately, it was great. It's great. They're yeah. terrible. And him, he's. I mean, terrible. oh my, you know, my, my players were lazy, and uh, you know, was, yeah, like your job, Fat Frank, isn't to motivate your team. You know, and come on. <laughs> I mean, it's just it was you know, a poor job of motivation, a poor job of getting them out there. It was you know, yeah. having them play, uh, you know, with with the style that he wants them to play. I mean, it was it was pathetic. Yeah. I mean, it's just typical of him. Typical. Exactly. His exactly. post game was hilarious. Everything was oh, terrible. Yeah. Terrible. First half we were terrible. Second half we were terrible. The managing yeah. was terrible. <laughs> the managing was terrible, by the way. I think he, the concession he, stand nachos yeah. were he terrible. Was just waiting for Arsenal to fail, and it just didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. 
Crazy. Oh yeah. And then oh, no, the they, went out, they went out there thinking there was going to be a cakewalk. It was going to be a cakewalk, yeah. you know? They were yeah. just going to go out on the pitch and Arsenal was going to roll over and it didn't happen. Yeah. And then once that didn't happen, the, the whole team kind of realized, okay, we're in trouble now. Yep. And they weren't able to dig themselves out of it. And, you know, and all of that is on Fat Frank. I mean, you know, again, it's just, you know, a, a, a problem of motivation, yeah. of, of getting your team prepared. And he didn't do a good job of it. And so now, and then he, you know, of course, it's, it's the team's fault yeah. for him. You know, it's not his fault. And this is the way he is, man. He's an entitled piece of shit. So, <laughs> well, I hate him. <laughs> good. But yeah, I, 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 you really feel that's kind of a running theme amongst Leeds fans, I've noticed. <laughs> yes. But yes. all right, man. Uh, fantastic win. Uh, and the Saints beat the Vikings. That's Mark's team. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I had no idea that happened. Uh, when did that happen? I, I don't invite uh, him over anymore. <laughs> he, he was over the past two years for the Saints. Like it, it, it didn't mean anything to us. That's why we lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. All right, man. James, so I didn't win that match you. anyway. I didn't win that game. <laughs> All right, man. Great talking to you. Thank you for showing up so early, Mark, in the cold. John, thank you for helping out. Uh, all right, man. Keep it rolling. Come on, you gunners. Leads, leads, leads. See you, James. All right. Leads, leads, leads. <laughs>